In the last few years, signals gained popularity in front-end web development. They are implemented in modern web frameworks like Solid and Quick, and also Angular adopted them. But what exactly are they, and do they replace RxJS observables altogether? When I started using Quick, this was the first time I used signals in practice instead of only reading about them. One question that quickly popped up was, do we still need RxJS when we have signals? In this video we will cover what a signal is and why RxJS has still its place. So what is a signal? A signal in software development is a data structure that holds one value at a time. This value can be read and written at any time. The signal stores listeners which are interested in the value changes. When the value is written, all listeners are called with this new value. This is a pseudo implementation of a signal. We have a factory that creates a signal. It's called create signal. It takes in an initial value and we have a set of listeners which are interested in those value changes. The signal implements two accessors to this value, a getter and a setter. When a signal is read and a listener is active, this listener will automatically be registered for those value changes. When the value is written, the internal reference gets updated and all the listeners are called with the current value. Aside from this create signal factory, we have a create effect function. It takes in a listener. Before synchronously calling this listener, it is stored in a variable that is also accessible by the signals, created with the create signal factory. So when the callback is executed and the value of the signal is accessed by this listener, it will be internally registered in the set of listeners of the signal. After the callback has finished its execution, the module scope variable will be reset to null. This is a very basic implementation and it's far from complete. And every web framework brings its own implementation of signals tailored to their needs. But this is basically how a signal works. So what can we do with signals? Signals are primarily used for reactive state management. We can place chunks of component state within a signal to make it reactive. The factories for this are called use signal in quick create signal in solid and just signal in angular. We can register listeners to those signals via use task in quick, create effect in solid or effect in angular. We can also derive signals from other signals. In quick we can do this via use computed, in solid via create memo and in angular we do this via derived. Web frameworks that implement signals often use them to enable fine-grained reactivity. This means if a signal value changes, not the whole component has to be re-rendered. Instead, only a local rendering is happening where the signal has been read before. Finally, let's compare signals to RxJS observables. Signals as well as observables are reactive data structures. They both emit values over time. But there are fundamental differences. Signals are designed for simple state management. In contrast to RxJS observables, signals are not lazy and they don't provide those powerful operators to manage subscriptions. This makes signals much easier to understand than observables and they should be preferred for simple tasks like state management. As I mentioned in this video, we should not overuse RxJS. We should not use it for problems where more basic solutions do their job well. With signals it may be easier to spot more places where RxJS would just be overkill. As developers, it's our responsibility to pick a well-suited tool for the problem at hand. 
and in most cases of reactive state management, signals are the better solution. For other, more complex problems, it may be reasonable to use the full power of RxJS that this great library provides us. So in this sense, never stop learning and see you in the next video.